Hey everyone, it's Eric here from Lapix. Got another video for you guys today. I have this uh, macOS Ventura that's on here. We have a local account that just has a password on there. And um, sometimes, obviously, you want to make sure you back up your data because uh, if anything happens, you don't want to be without your data. Um, other times, you might have a security lock. Uh, there's that negative 1008F error that you might get, especially on boot. Um, and that's usually the find my lock, like an activation lock if you already tie this to your phone or something. Um, we also have other videos showing how to access, we, we have the video actually on that one, showing how to access the data if that does happen. If you wanted to do that, you, you boot a Catalina. Um, or if you have a forgot password, we have a video talking about that. But that's not really what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, uh, this is more of a preventative thing that you want to do, or if you want to try access your, your data. Otherwise, if you have a problem with the OS, this would be something else you should probably do anyway. It might just be a good thing just to know. Um, and just a very informative video uh, for you guys out here. So we have this, we have Mac OS of Ventura here, and um, we actually showed videos about have, how we have like a bootable, like Catalina or an older OS uh, installed sometimes so we can look at data, maybe do transfers on that, especially maybe the OS is pretty slow or not able to access it or something. Um, and we want to show you guys today just a cool little thing. I don't know how long this is going to last anyway, so that's why we kind of recommend probably doing it as soon as possible, just to make sure that you have a backup here, right? So there's ways you can make bootable installers. We have lots of them on our channel going from Big Sur. Um, we have Ventura. We have, uh, what is it, Mon Monterey. We have lots of different ones on here. If you want to go ahead and check out how to make bootable, so I'm not really going to be showing that. Um, but we have one that has something like this, right? It's just like a test installer that we have. This is a Catalina one. Um, and it's a good one because you could still access a lot of the data as long as it's not obviously encrypted or something. Uh, or if you know the password, sometimes you can even prompt the password up and it won't be a problem. We have other videos talking about that too. But I want to show you guys how to actually get this um, because these are a little bit better ones. You're probably thinking, why do we really care about Catalina? Why don't you just get Big Sur, Monterey, or Ventura at this point? So sometimes when you have like the newer ones, Catalina works really well as just like a test operating system. Um, it's like a Windows to go or like a Linux bootable, uh, something like that to just access data. Um, there's stuff like that you can do for the bigger ones or for Big Sur. There's no consistency on it, and sometimes they won't install all the way. It, what I'm thinking is it's probably doing hardware checks on it, um, and every single time I've ever tried to make it, like about halfway through the installer, there's always a problem, right? So I'm going to be showing you another one because this, this uses the APFS format, uh, which is a good one. It's Catalina. It's the latest one that I know it works very well, and we use a lot here. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that. Um, you can go ahead and just get your Mac OS ready, um, and let's get into it. I'll show you on the screen cap. So we have a working uh, Mac OS here, and I'm going to be showing you something actually pretty cool. So if you go to like any browser, or something you can go to safari and what you could type in here is you can do catalina installer and what's going to happen is this is going to come up you're actually going to see it goes through um apps.apple.com and mac os catalina um you can try searching this on the app store as well but this will link it to it as well um and you can obviously do this on windows too kind of works the same way and what this is going to do is once you will pop up, there will be a Mac App Store preview. Now, since we have Ventura, it's going to pop up this way because it's going backwards in an OS, and it usually doesn't like that. Um, if you have an older OS, this will kind of work uh, a little bit differently. It probably won't pop up as much problems, right? But it's not really a problem, but it's just going to tell you here. So when you hit Get, it's going to bring this up. I've had trouble just searching this in the store, so that's why I went through the browser. And you can hit Get here. And what it's going to do is it's going to try... It's going to try, it's going to search, like checking for like, like a regular update, and then it's going to prompt this, and it says download. Are you sure you want to download it? So uh, I already downloaded it, so yes, you can hit download, and what it's going to do is it'll actually go, when you're done with that, what it'll do is, again, it'll be in the applications, but when you try to click it, it's going to say it's too old, and you can't really uh, do much about it, which is funny. I actually tell you it's too old. <laughs> I don't know why I would say that, but that's funny. If you want these old ones, uh, you can just search the same type of thing, because they still have them up. I know... Um, High Sierra still works too. That's a very good one. It's probably one of the better older ones. And El Capitan, if you try to do an installer for it, it usually tries to make you access um, or log in with the credentials on the App Store when you do the install. And I've tried it every time. It hasn't worked. So I would try to avoid El Capitan. I'll just go with a High Sierra or Catalina. Now what you want to do is you want to go to or your disk utility. You go to here. And you want to select the USB. Now this is going to delete all the data that's on the USB. You want to hit Erase. And you can pretty much call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it Catalina Installer. 
Now, uh, I've seen a lot of inconsistencies when you do the APFS format, so it's probably better to do, um, because this is just, just an install, you want to do uh, macOS journaled there. Um, I tried this actually even making this one specifically for it, and it gave me an error that says you can't um, do it through APFS. So I'm going to do it this way, because this is I know this way is going to work. So we're going to go ahead and hit erase, and again, this is going to delete all the data that's on there, because we're making a bootable installer. Okay. Let's say it's successful and it's done, you can just hit done close this out we don't care about this anymore now what you want to do you can go on the same page or um, if you can find it so it's under terminal and you want to type in this command I'm going to paste this one because it's very very specific to um, where this is located right so this is a command it shows for uh, the Catalina app and this one it has to be located in your applications folder make sure it's located in your applications folder you can just move it if you're not sure if it's somewhere else you can just move it you can click applications and just move it here and then it'll be there and then you can just uh, put a type in this command and when you do that um, you also want to put um, dash dash then you want to type volume and now you want to have this location of where this is and you can just drag and drop this here and you see it'll pop up volume Catalina installer um, now you want to hit return and now it's going to ask for a password if you don't have a password you want to make sure you put that in because for doing these terminal commands it usually does require a password so if you leave it blank it sometimes it doesn't work so I'm going to type in my password then hit return now it's going to again it's going to wipe it all over again so we're going to hit yes because that's fine now it's going to do its thing um, and once it's done it's going to take a little bit of time but once it's done the, it'll be at least a bootable disk there and uh, yeah, that should be at least we then now we have a official fresh installer okay, and when it's done uh, We just pretty much put you back here um, now what you have in the corner is you actually have a full Installer here. So when you open this this will actually be a bootable installer on here uh, If you double click it's the same thing. It's just an application But the whole idea with that was to make the USB bootable So what we want to do now is we're actually just gonna go ahead and turn off the machine Because we're all good and even turning off is going to safely eject it's not everywhere if you're doing something like that Okay, so now we're at this point, um, and now what you want to do is you want to hold Option whenever you turn this on. Just hold Option, and it'll boot up, and it'll boot to a menu here. You're going to see this, and um, now since we have this plugged in, you're going to see at this say uh, boot to an installer, right? If you already know how to do this, this is basically just installing this on a USB. It's the same way if you go through like a recovery mode and you want to reinstall an operating system, it'd be the same way how you wipe it and then you just uh, install it, right? And this one, the only thing differently we're gonna be doing is pointing the install to the USB. We're not gonna be pointing the install to our Mac OS, right? Which has the hard drive. Okay, and now the beautiful thing about this is this is an offline installer, so we don't have to connect to the internet. So everything's done internally and I would recommend probably going that way anyway. Now, if you want to install this on your macOS, you can do that as well, because this is the same type of video for that. But the whole point of this is really to show you guys how to make like another backup or another bootable. So uh, we go to Open Disk Utility. And you just want to hit View at the top here. You want to hit Show All Devices, because you always want to start the hierarchy. So we have our disk image. Um, you're going to think, well, there's two USBs, right? And I don't know which one is which. Well, you don't want to get them mixed up because one is going to say install, one is going to say test. We know we named this one install Mac OS, so this is going to be fine here. Um, but if we go to the other one, this has uh, test, this has data, this uh, other stuff because we already have an installer on here. So we're going to be doing this. Uh, make sure you pick your USB that you don't want. So again, you need to have another USB that's going to have some storage. I probably recommend going like a 64 gig. They're cheap anyway. You can get them like $10. Um, you want to hit erase at the top and then you want to format these ones i would recommend going more of apfs because those are on the newer ones especially for like an operating system then you would obviously hit erase here i'm not going to be doing that now because i already have uh, my bootable already made um so i don't want to really be doing that again you can just hit erase it's going to erase and then when you're done with that you can actually go um you can hit disk utility and quit disk utility and now the whole point is to really make is to do the installer. Now this is good because you have everything that's offloaded on offline USB, right? So you don't have to connect it to no server, you don't have to worry about anything else, it's already done. So you can hit agree, sign your life away. And it's gonna ask where you want to install it. Um, it's grayed out for me here because it's obviously there's not enough uh, space. Um, the main OS, right, is here, and I don't want to be doing that because um, obviously it's telling you need to do APFS anyway, but I don't want to be installing it on our main operating system on the, on the disk drive itself because 
why it's going to give a problem i don't want that because i already have ventura i don't want to do that i want to make sure i pick the usb make sure you do that usually it's very easy to, to find you can name it something maybe you want to call it test or bootable i call it a test here and once you do that then you just go through install steps um again i already have this already installed but it's very straightforward you just go through install steps and hit okay because you already wiped it from before um, now when you're when you're done with all this it's going to make the, the install it's going to take some time um, and it does take a bit of time. Don't worry if it does. That's actually totally normal. And now what we want to do is we want to uh, quit. Or once it's done, it'll obviously do its thing. It'll, it'll restart a few times and do that. Um, but otherwise, when we're shut down for now, I'll just remove the installer so you don't get really confused. And this will be like having a bootable here, right? Because it goes here through the Apple logo. Um, and it's going to search. And we have our test over here. Now, when you have these ones, um, these also come with whenever you have like an installer or something. Um, I, we, if you see even we label the test and install, it's going to have a recovery bootable as well. So you can actually install um, Catalina or the, the operating system again because that will actually go through the server because it's, it's a, uh, the recovery is a partition that pings the server. So um, we don't care about that, but if you ever want that in the future, you can have that installer and it's very nice that Mac OS has that nice little recovery partition, that pings the server, but the whole point is not to involve, especially if this is going years down the line, right? You don't want to, uh, or if you can't get access anymore to. So now I'm just gonna be booting to our test one because that's where I wanna see all the data. And now this is gonna be the whole kind of point of the thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. It's just gonna boot to it. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time, but you guys don't want to see this capture anymore. You guys want to see an actual screen capture. So. Okay, so now we're booted to our OS here. This is great again, and we're accessing this on like a Ventura machine. So this is pretty cool. So sometimes you might get an error in the corner that says something. Yep, here it goes, incompatible disk, something about features. And sometimes you actually won't even see your main OS here uh, to get your stuff off. So what you want to do um, this is great. Again, if you have a test, you're all good to go. Um, if you don't have anything else, you're all usually pretty go, good to go too. But one more tip would be to see the hard drive, right? If I want to go ahead and see my main hard drive, or if there's a problem with that, maybe I want to access data or something. So what you can do is you can go over to here. You can go back over to Disk Utility. And you're going to, uh, when you want to hit View, you want to hit Show All Devices here. And we see here's the main, um, uh, here's the main hard drive that's here. And we want this to view, right? Because I don't see it anywhere. Where is it? So you want to click Mac OS data or whatever you name this partition on your normal installer. And you want to uh, right click it or you can do a double tap on the trackpad. You can hit show and finder. And when you go to show and finder, now you can see that there are um, the, the user folders, right? Because it wouldn't show here before, even on either one of these, you just see update because that's a different partition that's there, but you wouldn't see your data. So if you go to users, I can go users, and then you have your user folder here, and then you can access your data that way. And you can transfer stuff. Sometimes we have stuff here. You can actually just go ahead and let's go to location. Yeah, sometimes you have stuff here that you can just go ahead and transfer. That's fine. There's other times where um, you might have something that has something like this, right? You might have like a minus or a red minus on there while you're in there. And that's usually a permission thing. Now, um, usually again, you have to uh, mount it or something or at least have the password on there to to enable this because this is more of a permissions it's not able to do that other times uh, we've seen this too you can actually just right click you can hit copy and what you can do is you can hit paste it anywhere here and when you hit a copy and paste you see it still shows that but it's going to go away because it says you may need to enter in the password for the administrator um, sometimes you can just enter in your own and now we have access. Um, I actually disabled access for this and it's still, or I just re really just uh, request permissions for this to be blocked on here. And now look, you don't have the red minus anymore. Um, I don't know why, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. I probably would say it's not gonna work more, more of the time, but if you try this first, just to see if you do have a problem with the permissions, um, otherwise you can uh, do it. There's other ways you can do it. It's probably more, you can use recovery software to do that. Or if you forgot your password, we have videos showing that on there if you forgot your password anyway. But you see that the permissions actually looks to be fine and it's going good. Um, now again, we have a password on our Ventura one. That's a local password. It's not, it's not an Apple ID password, but um, you can see that we still can see like data in our other partition here. You can still see this totally fine. It's not actually blocking any access. This is just in case you do have it. So just a little tip for you guys. Um, we always like to make sure that you guys will have something like this, maybe to have like another way to access an operating system or just to have, or even to tinker a little bit with that. Um, always have a good extra OS. It's very, it's, it's great. It's free for now. Obviously you can get the installer from Apple 
itself. Uh, now, again, we don't know how long these installers are going to be there. They could take them down anytime, especially these are much older. And how well they will work on the Apple Silicon is definitely another thing, too, because they might not li like them as well. We used the Catalina a lot of times before on that, and we were able to transfer data in and out totally no problem. Um, but there's always a good way. This is always a good thing to do, especially if you uh, have a problem with your OS. It's really slow. Sometimes you get the pinwheel of death. Who really knows? But just a quick little tip for you guys. Uh, again, if you are uh, if you forgot your password, um, we do have a video showing on how to do that. Go check it out. I'll even link at the very end of it. I'll show the little annotations. I'll show that for the password forget ones. And if you're interested in creating a bootable um, step by step, I know I kind of showed that anyway, but um, I'll, I'll link that down below too. And also, if you want that little terminal command, I'll link that in so you guys can just copy and paste it for the most part. So if you're watching this video on another one, but again, you need to have two USBs and probably a working computer for the most time, most of time for something like this. But this is good, just preventive. Um, this is good just for more preventive stuff and just having a nice external OS that is free and it's really nice and that's it's a great feature that, that Mac does have. So hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please do like, really help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. Um, let me know down below uh, which OS that you have or do you have any problems with your operating system and uh, what do you guys use? Do you still use Catalina? Do you have an older OS? Do you like making bootables or what do you like to do? So let me know down below and thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Bye.